You probably realize that whatever happened down there is Mandalorian. And I'm fucking destroyed. Yep. New quarter started. Really. Don't think I'll be having time to make any more videos. However, though, quick update. You remember this? The shop that's 9500? Um, upgrade time. <laughs> 58x. To be more precise, it's the Master Up Sennheiser Jubilee 58x. How is it? And why did I choose to buy it? And is that a good buy? Yeah, let's talk about it. First, let's talk about the 9500. I'm sorry for that. You probably realize I'm recording with a potato because, first of all, it is a potato. Second of all, I don't have time to get all my setup. Low effort videos. It's gonna be the thing for the next few weeks because I'm gonna be fucking busy. Cranking my math homework. Calculus is not fucking fun. Especially when you're Asian, you're expected to be good at it, but you're not. Anyways. The Shop 9500. I bought these because I know the reputation of this pair amongst, basically, the audiophile community. At least over here in... The Asian area, like Asia, China, Taiwan, because in China, this pair is famously cheap. Like in the United States, you can see, oh, the Shop 9500 is a really good value because it's $80. You see, I got these for $45. <laughs> and it's brand new. It's not a fake. It's like bought it off the official store at when there's like a flash discount, but. When it's regular price, it's still like $55, $60. Just extremely good value when you consider this is one-third or even less the price of this. The Shop 9500. So let's talk about a sound. The sound, well, it's an open driver. I just have to say, I prefer the... Grado SR60E a lot more than this in terms of sound because the SR60E gives a lot more of the pizzazz, the surprise factor with the high end. I'm sorry, Mandalorian got there. Yeah, she was like, that was first, that was first season. <laughs> Anyways, Mandalor Mandalorian, um, the Shop 9500, the sound. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's better than SR60E because it sounds a lot more, um... Placid. Let's put it this way. It sounds a lot more... less exciting. A lot less exciting than the SR60E. Let's just put it this way. This is what you would expect of a discount HD600. With the bass is a little bit muddier, the soundstage is a little bit smaller, and the high is, it's not very pronounced, but it's a little bit shrill and a little bit fatiguing for some reason. Don't quite understand why. It is pretty good for what, for the price, but, you know, it's only a matter of time until I make the upgrade to this. Oh, I was looking at the 6XX as well, but... Hey, I only have a file Q3, and that's the only thing I gotta drive it with. So, 6 sets out of the window. It's not really an option. So, parallel comparison time. 9500 versus 58X. Is it a good upgrade? Let's check out. So first, let's talk about 9500. I use these as my beaters, and I use it in while playing games, not too much in music because you look at this cable, it's actually a very fancy looking upgrade cable, silver, but the fancy sort of ends with look, it's like two bucks, this is like supposedly silver plated but I don't really think it is but 
but it sounds alright. It sounds better than the stock cable for, for sure because the stock cable was like 4 meters long and it's just garbage. So this is an improvement upon the stock cable and it looks really good. So let's put it aside and talk about a earphone. First of all, let's talk about a comfort. This thing, it's a little bit hot to wear but oh man, when the temperature is a little bit lower, oh boy are these comfortable. They just, they don't really clamp onto your ear, just snap it on and I'm not gonna say you can forget they, them, that they're there, just like, it feels like something's hugging you, it just feels like two pillows being like gently mushed against your head as if you're just having a, like an existential crisis and just crying in the bed saying, why the fuck am I doing this? That's exactly what it feels like without the existential crisis, that, that, that's for sure. But yeah, it's extremely comfortable, two pillows and no really strain anywhere because the pressure is really even out throughout the headband and the rings and it's just really comfortable and and then the thing with the comfort I just have to say like with a little asterisk on the side the cup was pretty shallow and the foam is actually really really soft so I had a few times where I have it like pressed in a little bit and it started hitting the tip of my ears and it sort of is not really comfortable but it's not too bad for me because my ears weren't that big but if your ears are a little bit bigger I'm not sure if it's gonna hit it and I'm not sure is it if it's gonna be comfortable like in the long term but for me this pair oh boy really comfortable so nice And then we come to the build quality. Like, for Christ's sakes, it, this is not very expensive headphone. It's like a mid end, low end. Mid, lo, mid to low end because we still have like the HD681 if you want to go lower. But as a mid range headphone, I mean, it's from a big brand, but everything, though plastic, it feels very solid. Unlike the Grado. Oh. That's the only reason I bought this over the Grado, because the Grado feels like airline freebie. It's not even funny. It's 60 bucks, and it feels like something that's worth six, six bucks. I mean, it sounds really good, but that pushed me away. But this, oh, you don't have that problem with it. Everything, when it's metal, it's metal. When it's plastic, it's good plastic. It's really smooth and solid plastic and it's not really overstatedly designed as for all of the open driver earphones I, I don't think there's any one of them that sort of stands out in my head in my head but like with the big R and L it makes sense like how it is just uh, understated but it try to be a little bit more different and a little bit more cool I understand that and it's pretty cool And with the headband adjuster, it's metal. It feels really nice. And the click, the clickness is pretty damn good. And you can see with the hole and you can see like each notch and the entire headband, it's really flexible. And this cushy part, nice. So the comfort and the build quality on this, I would say it is definitely way above its price range just feels very good I mean sort of is above its price range because this thing was about five times the price when it's released as something new unlike the HG600 which really stayed on the level price point all throughout its lifetime that sort of justifies why this is such a good buy and then yeah I, I um, let's talk about the sound I mean I already mentioned it before it's a downgrade HD600 with a slightly muddier bass and a little bit more shrill but not really shiny highs for some reason that just is a thing and the sound stage is a little bit more narrow on a lateral side but the hor but horizontally it's actually 
pretty similar with the HE600. And yeah, that's all I gotta say about it. It's a really solid piece. It's a safe pick for a friend, for a family member. It just works and it is probably as in unoffensive as a pair of headphones can get. And then now we move on to the upgraded pair. Jubilee. HD 58X. I bought it from Massdrop and it's 180 bucks. Shift it over to Taiwan and it's 30 bucks extra. And it's still 210 bucks. It's still better than the HD 660S, which is like 340 bucks or something over here. But just a little bit more than US, which because there's gonna be a little bit of tax, but anyways. And then let's first talk about the quality the build quality. Everything here, I just, I, I just want to say, like something with the build quality. Although it, what where it needs to be pla metal is metal. Where it needs to be, like good plastic, it's plastic, and it doesn't feel as well built as the 9500. Oh, shut up! I don't need to update my fuck all. Anyways, I just don't feel like this is as well built as this. Because the plastic, I mean, there's like the parts where the glossy plastic, it looks like it's spray painted or something. It have like an orange skin effect to it. I'm not quite sure why. It sort of, you know, gets in the way of the cool look, the cool Sennheiser branding. Yeah, the orange, orange, orange skin, it just doesn't really feel that good it looks a little bit cheap and the metal part I would really really appreciate if they can turn this metal part into this color because it just feels like a part of plastic everything it just doesn't really stand out as something really noteworthy which for many it's actually a good thing but personally I would much rather this to be this color and the grating, yeah, it feels really nice, but I have a problem with it because it you can press into it. Yeah, it's a little bit annoying. It's a little bit squishy. Not as solid as this one because the grating on this is a lot, lot smaller. It's a little bit squishy on this one. And my final problem... Oh, actually, it's not final problem. I mean, the box is right here. It's a really dumbed down box and everything is cardboard you can really tell where they put the money that's in the drivers because this box it feels cheap as hell and the stock cable shit in the door gotta grab it Oh, bitch. The the sec second to last problem actually is the cable. This cable, let's put it in some really kind way. This is junk. <laughs> this is garbage. Like, look at this. Just feel cheap plastic here, 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 everywhere. Cheap plastic everywhere. It's, it's it's not really stiff, but it's not as soft as I wanted to, and just doesn't feel something like 180 bucks plus a little bit of shipping worth of cable. This feels five bucks. I don't quite understand why they put this terrible of a cable inside a box, but they did, and I'm not really happy. Well, that's not really a big problem for me because I did change the cable into a balanced connection so that the um, Q3 can drive it a little bit better, have much more power going into it, and definitely make this thing sound much better. 
So the cable was not as big as a problem as I was trying, trying to make it out to be because you want to change out a cable for something with a balanced connection. And by the way, this is about 30 bucks plated, copper plated, silver, and you know, the, all the shlo muscles. 16 core, copper plated, silver. I mean, I really cannot compare these two cables sound but because it's a different connector and it's powered differently when you're plugged into the Fio, the Q3, and a BTR5. So I just want to say this cable, it feels a lot better. And it feels definitely more... It's braided as, as well. Yeah, it feels a lot more 180 bucks like. And I feel like this is a must-do upgrade when you have one of these pairs. And the final thing I want to talk about, a lot of people probably wouldn't give a shit, but the ear cups. This feels, this feels like airline freebie plastic. Probably it's for acoustic purposes, but this feel, this feels like airline freebie plastic. This is Grado all over again, although it doesn't have the crazy. Like the terribly built Gumpla, like, you know, the, the parts of plastic sticking out. It still is well built, but the plastic material itself, really cheap. I don't quite understand why they put this here, but they did what they did, and they cannot go back. Well, let's talk about something good with the build quality on the 58X. The Velour pads. These are comfortable. I mean, these are actually a bit more hot you know it, it traps in a lot more air and then makes you sweat a lot more with the comparing to the what was that anyways comparing to the foam pads on this but it feels a lot more comfortable when you're actually it's when it actually is touching our skin not sure about reliability but hey it is what it is um, let's, let's talk about comfort. First of all, I want to say something about the cable. Like, the double out. Like, come on. It, it is 20, it, it is 2021. And you still have to manage a way to run the cable through the earphone? Come on. This is cancer. Because when you're taking it off, it just gets... It, it strangles you. This pair is actually trying to strangle you when you take it off. That's why so many people are doing like removable cable mods for the DT770, the DT770, because this, this is no bueno. I don't like it. But talking about actual comfort when you're wearing it, less so than this. The clamping force on this pair, according to archings.com, or ratings.com, I don't really know. It is about three times the clamping force, two and a half times compared to the shop. So it really s sticks onto your ear quite a lot more. It snugs into it. And it is still comfortable, but the pad, it just feels a little bit more, like it's a lot thinner compared to this. You see, this is a lot thicker, like the diameter. This is a lot thinner. So it sort of creates a pressure ring around your ear and it pushes it down. I mean, it's probably not a problem for, you know, two hours of usage, but after the three, three hours or more, it gets a little bit on my head that why is this feeling, you know, this feels a lot better, you know, on the third hour. And the headband, headband it's really soft, but I don't really think it's really supportive in any sort of way. Not a bad thing, but I mean the entire thing clamps down far enough that that thing does not have to be supportive. So yeah, I'm fine with that. And then <laughs> let's talk about a sound. Come on, Th that's the most important thing. Everything I expected from this, like I didn't expect. I sort of come to expect a little bit of a better build quality than this, but the sound, oh. It more than, you know, catches up back and then make it, make itself worth, like, the price tag it's asking for. 
comparing to this, which the sound, I will have to say, it's a little bit, uh, this pair. It fixes the entirety of the muddy, ba muddy bass issue. And the mids, it's very pronounced, it's thick, and it's instrument forward, vocal back, which is a little bit different from my Blessing 2. I mean, they're very different earphones, so I'm fine with that. The tearing is instrument, vocal, and bass. The bass is really far back. And then some of the cymbal crashes goes even further. That's usually what happens. I mean, I'm totally fine with that, but... Uh, still, you know, it's I've been sort of trained to like the Blessing too, so... It sort of is something new to learn on the table. And then... The highs, it's smooth, it's sort of more laid back than I would like to imagine. It's certainly not 600, I, I, that's have to say. The 600, when properly driven, oh boy, it is, it's gonna make the 58X feels like it's a compromise. Because the, the tuning on this is warmer, a lot warmer than the 600. And the 600 already sort of have a really laid back tuning. It's just sort of a golden standard of just everything neutral. And this thing is sort of on a warmer side. I like something aggressive, and this is warmer. Not sure I like the tuning as much, but the, I mean, the, the hard skills is there. Definitely is there. But the tuning, well, it, I'm not, I'm not its primary audience. Let's just put it this way. Mm, and let's talk about why I got the 5XX. I mean, first of all, I never owned a HD 58, the 580 Precision series, like 580 Precision, 600, 660, never owned any of those before. So I feel like this is a really good pair to get into it because it's probably the lowest end of the price bracket. And secondly, yeah, it's drivability. The 600 just doesn't sound right when it's driven by the Q3, and obviously my com my computer directly, the BTR5, just doesn't quite sound right. It's a lot muddier, the 600, and that's why I didn't buy the 6XX. It's just a little bit harder to drive. This pair, you can get away without an amp, but I would totally recommend an amp with a bit more power than usual. I mean, the Q3 is fine, but I would much rather drive this on a hip deck. Gonna buy the hip deck because it just yeah the does the hissing thing so eh, it's it's a compromise option. <laughs> if it wasn't for the deck I would go for the 6XS 6XX but it is what it is so 58X it is. The entirety the tuning the sound tuning of this pair it's not in my personal favorite zone as much as this is just a little bit, you know. The tuning on this is a little bit more intense, but in a wrong way. It sort of is shrill without all the, j like, I was about to say jizz. It's the, th it's the shrill without all the fizz. And this is without all the shrills, but it has some fun into the listening because the sound stage is really good it really hugs you around the ambiance is so nice but i just sort of hope there is a little bit more to the highs and a little bit more intensity on a mid and personally vocal forward a little bit more and move the instruments back a little bit but hey it's already tuned it's already hot seller good job master up on dropping the HD series price all the way down, all the way down, so that we have like the 58X, now we have 560, oh yes, this is sweet, and I do enjoy this, but if you're just looking for like a budget option, Shop 9500, it is the most, it is probably as inoffensive as a pair of open backs gets, and good value really really good value 
feels really nice as well. So really good gift item. Assuming that your yeah, family member really needs a bear because they're watching television a little bit too loudly. Especially Mandalorian. Anyways. <sighs> Gotta say, um, this is a really low effort video for me. You see, I've been recording with the potato and I probably don't have any time to put in any effort in my future videos in the next 10 or so weeks because I'll be busy doing some cancerous math work because, oh my god, I thought it was an April Fool's joke that a math homework was that hard, but no, it was not an April Fool's joke, it just is that hard. So, probably won't go into the editing and, yeah, these will have to do for now. Hope you enjoyed, hope you sounded... I hope, I hope it's not an absolute waste of time for you, and see you around. I have no idea what next, but see you around.